Okay, let's talk about the fourth chapter. The church refused to look like the community. You know, as I think back and as the stories that I've heard about Lutheran Church of the Master back in the 1960s, late 50s, early 60s, when this church started, these were all vegetable fields. And uh, there were blue-collar workers that were here. And that's uh, how this church started. It was started as a family church. It was started as a, an organism that would interact with the community, and people were drawn. Now, we don't live in the 1960s or 70s or 80s. You know the old field of dream things, build it and they will come. That's not true anymore. Years ago, when church, when you were going to plant a church, what, what church bodies did was they went into a city and they erected a building. And maybe it would just have been the first phase, but they erected a building because that told the community they were permanent, they were staying, they were going to be there for the people, and they were going to stay there. Well, you can put up a building now, and people will drive right by it and not take notice of it. Uh, there's lots of people that drive by Lutheran Church of the Master every day, but they have no clue what goes on inside. They don't even know who we are or what we're like. They don't know if we're friendly or if we're mean, if we're beautiful or ugly. They don't know, because just because you build it doesn't mean that they're going to come these days. And so, in and amongst the decades, as this community grew, and as places like Brooklyn Center decided, we're going to make affordable income, uh, and so we're going to put up a lot of apartment buildings, and now you had transient people more than permanent people, and, and there were some people that stayed, and they've stayed here, like some of you have stayed here for a long time, but your kids grew up, and they're in the next town or the next city, and they didn't come back to church here, but what we failed to do is we failed to, to stop start, keep meeting this city. Now, a couple pages into this, he makes an interesting comment. As a heading, it says, others first equals life, me first equals death. He says, when a church ceases to have a heart and ministry for its community, it's on the path toward death. Now, I've heard, I've talked to Pastor Swedberg and Carol Swedberg, and I, I've heard the stories of how they reached out to this community, and they were just part of this community, and that's a lot of reasons why this church grew, and, and as you came, and as others came to this church, and they you brought your children, and your children grew up here, and your children, they talked to their friends, and you talked to their friends, and their parents, and the neighbors that moved in as new houses went up, and that's how this, this church kept going and kept growing. He says, they said, uh, vibrant and living churches look after the interest of others. They're concerned for their communities. They open the door for others. And down at the bottom of that page, he says, how can we tell? The church did not look like or reflect the community in which it was located. Or if it did, it stopped ministering to those around them. He says at the close of this, our autopsy revealed that the church had become self-centered and self gratifying. Now, I'm going to say this to you again. Please don't get defensive or, or don't say, think that somehow we're trying to be little Lutheran Church of the Master. We're not. But we need to have some really difficult discussions, I believe. And if we're very honest, we will see and we'll come to agreement that a lot of what we do is for ourselves. It has nothing to do with those outside of these walls, the ones that we're called to. This church is planted in this northwest quadrant of Brooklyn Center for a reason. Are we meeting the needs of these people? We've got to start here. If we don't, we'll continue to die. Have a good discussion.